The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater. Welcome to a wonderful world of your own making. I'm Tom Bosley. Let me bring you the magic of radio drama. A theater whose stage has no limits but your imagination. Where adventure unconfined by time or space is yours for the listening. Where you can be anything you dream. Armored knight or lovely princess. Magician or monster. Hero or even villain. Sail seas. Scale mountains. Explore galaxies. All in your own minds. Do anything. Anywhere. Anywhen. On the wonderful stage of your own imagination. Our adventure story, Moby Dick, was adapted from Herman Melville's novel, especially for the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater, by Alan Sloan, and stars Howard De Silva. Well, Come with me now to the time of tall ships, the year of 1850, and the port of old Nantucket, home of the whaling fleet. You are a penniless young schoolteacher, weary of the classroom, seeking a night's lodging before you try for a sailor's berth on a whaling ship. Your name? Call me Ishmael. Hey, Keeper, have you got a bed for the night? If you don't mind sharing it with a harpooner. Well, I like to be private in my sleeping, but I'll share half of any decent man's blanket. <laughs> Fair enough. Right up them stairs, my lad. I was fast asleep, dreaming of whales. When something, I know not what, woke me. I all but leapt out of bed and skin both. For towering over me was a giant with no hair but a scalp knot, a purplish tattooed face like a mildewed skull. In one hand a tall harpoon, and in the other a shrunken, shriveled human head. Who the devil you tell me or I kill? A, a poor sailor seeking to ship out. Uh, I, quick, quick. Do not fear sleep near cannibal. I fear no man. Ah, you fear big whale? No. Good. We go same boat. Stand the same watch. Smoke same pipe. Eat same mess. Kill same whale. Befriend. Next morning, we went down to the docks. This brown giant who would never cringe to any man. And I... Ships masts like a forest, mountains of casks, the clang of the anvil, the hot smell of melting tar, the tang of the salty sea. There we boarded a stubby ship called the Pequod. Its mate, one Mr. Starbuck. What takes you away then? I want to see the world and the great whale. Why would your ship on the Pequod? Sir, I see she is decorated all round with ivory teeth where other ships have wood. Why, even her tiller is the lower jaw of the monster. A good omen, sir. Uh. Very well, sign the papers. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, hmm. my pay, sir? Three hundred share of the profit. Oil, ivory, and bone. Next. Who are you? Quickwag. Harpooner. Be a Christian. Be king, my own island. No pagans wanted me. Wait! Look here. See that spot on dock there. You see him? Watch now, Harpoon. <laughs> Suppose him spot one whale eye, huh? Why, that whale dead now. Uh, uh, make your mark here, Gwog. Quick, quick. What to pay? Uh, not you, sir. More than was ever given a Harpoon here. Make your mark. Mr. Mate. Who captain this boat? Captain Ahab. Too late. Too late now. What's too late? No can go ashore now. We sign papers. What's wrong, quickly? Captain wrong. Ahab. Too late. 
right. I don't understand. Him crooked man have a crooked head, ivory leg. Big whale to him off. White whale. White like cloud. Call him Moby Dick. Oh, well, him devil. Queequeg, are you afraid? No. But Queequeg find ship carpenter. Make friend fast. Why not the cook? I should Better think... Better carpenter. What for? Make nice coffin. Maybe make two coffin. <laughs> All my heart's desire. And below decks, in the forecastle, the good talk of man to man. But never a sign of the captain. Well, you'll see him in good time. What do you want of him, lad? Oh, just curious? Crooked man. Crooked head. He hebs a good man. But moody. Desperate moody. Since he lost his leg by that accursed wave. I'd still like to see him moody or no. Why should he see you when he won't even see me and I'll give me course and orders? How long? Uh, that is, when will we make home port again? <laughs> when? <laughs> Three years. Next time you sign on, read the papers. <laughs> Ever south, well past the Bermudas and into the Caribbean, but no sign of Captain Ahab. Still, at times, we heard him in his cabin. Curiosity consumed me to see this strange captain of our fates for three long years to come. And there was more to wonder about than the look of him. Aye, there's the prophecy eating at his soul. What prophecy? Oh, that about the hearses. What mean hearse? Well, it's a it's a, a a cart for carrying a coffin. What about coffin, mate? Never your minds are pagan. There's things it's best not to know about aforehand. Not even the whisper of. Oh, Queequeg talk to carpenter again. We sailed, now well into the South Atlantic, hauling for the African coast. And still, no sign of Ahab. A fresh wind and a calm sea, the merry dolphins plunging ahead, but nary a sign of a spout, nary a glimpse of Ahab. By then, I'd found the second mate, Mr. Stubbs, more companionable. You say, my you don't fear the whale? No, sir. Have you ever seen a whale? No, sir, I have not. <laughs> Still come time to lower away. I'll be glad I'll have ye in me boat. I will have no man who is afraid of a whale. Thank you, sir. And yet, and yet courage is all very well, but carefulness is better. I am in this ocean to kill whales for my living. Not like the captain. What does The he... man seeks no oil, no ivory, no whale bone, none. What then? He has sworn to kill a certain whale. A single one in all the oceans. I've been thinking, are we... Is man so noble and grand a creature that he is more important than the others? i just, just wondering, sir. Never thought of that. True, though. Dead, struck down by plague or old age, pierced by harpoon. What does it matter? We all become Earth again. Oh, see? Captain Mayhab lives with it, though. With what, Mr. Stubbs? Death, schoolmaster. Queequeg and two other harpooners, Tashtigo, an Indian, and Dagu, an African. A world lacking only the yellow man. On this day, I was aloft and saw a spout. There she blows! She blows! Hey, 
my shipmates came screaming from their posts, scrambling up from the gloomy forecastle, and I down from my perch on the mast, when suddenly he was there, on his quarterdeck, Captain Ahab. Now I knew why holes had been bored an inch into the planking. Into one, Ahab planted his ivory leg, and secure against the roll of the swell, he surveyed us. He looked like a man cut away from the stake after the fire had consumed his limbs. Tall, broad, like some great tree. And like some tree struck by lightning, he bore a livid white scar springing from his iron gray hair down his tawny face and into his collar. The brand of the beast of the deep. Let us lower away boats, Captain, and after him. No! But, sir, no! It is not he. But he's oil and fresh meat, sir. It is not he. Steady she goes. Steady she goes. Did you see his eyes, lad? Like powder pans. His brow flashing like a breached bone. Is he mad, sir? I've heard him speaking in his cabin and no voice answering. Heard that thump. Thump day and night. Does he not sleep? Uh, not that I know. But whom does he speak to in there? The devil. Or the white whale. <sighs> Maybe they be the same. Been weeks now, Mr. Stubbs, and we're seeing whale. Plenty whale. Plenty oil, plenty money for all. Will you not let me speak for the crew to the captain? Scant shares we'll get for our voyage. Let that old man alone. Never speak to him, whatever he says. Unless he calls for an answer. Week upon week of sailing and nary another glimpse of Ahab. Again, I was up at the masthead, uselessly singing out at sight of spouts, when he appeared among us again like a ghost. All hands on deck. And you are. Come down. Mark him, Mishmael. Men, look ye. Do you see the Spanish gold doubloon? A $16 piece, men. Do you see it? Mr. Starbuck, hand me yon top hammer. Now, whosoever raises me a white-headed whale with a crooked jaw... With irons in his milky hide like saplings, three holes punctured in his starboard fluke, he shall have this gold outside nailed to the mast. Yeah! Yeah! The white whale, I say. Skin your eyes for him and him alone. I want no common blue fin back nor humpback. I want the king, the emperor of the deep. Him they call Moby Dick. What ails ye there? No tongue? Captain, sir. Who be ye? Ishmael. Sir, the men aren't shared. Very well. You may take what ye need. <laughs> but summon me not until ye sing out for Moby Dick. That a cursed beast that made me a poor peg leg lubber forever and a day. I'll never rest till he spouts black blood and rolls spin out. What say ye, my children? Will ye splice hands on it now and get me my vengeance? Vengeance! Vengeance? How many barrels will that yield? How much will revenge pay our Nantucket market if we ever return? Vengeance is the Lord's. God help me. God help us all. What will you do now? What can you do aboard a ship whose strange captain refuses to allow you and your shipmates to hunt any whale but one? The dreaded Moby Dick. A strange ship with a captain who must be mad, sailing under a prophecy nobody will tell you about. I shall continue shortly with Act Two. The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. Sailing on the Pequod 
out of Nantucket, bound for the southernmost sea on the hidden track of the dread white whale. Storm and calm, wind and doldrum, watch upon watch, yet never the misty spout that marks the giant white whale Captain Ahab is sworn to kill. Not for oil, but for vengeance. Vengeance on a dumb brute, Mr. Starbuck? Whatever it is, Mayor. That's more than madness, sir. It's blasphemy. Uh, Ahab would strike the sun if it insulted him. Still, tis but another fish to me, white or black. What think you, Queequeg? Queequeg think him sharp eye sea whale first. Get cold. What if I see him first? I dream of a doubloon. Queequeg get cold. <laughs> What would ye do with that doubloon pagan? Put him in fire, melt him down. Take iron and make new point for harpoon. And waste it in the sea. Gold better for kill king of Wales. But what about the prophecy? Mr. Starbuck, will you not tell us? No. You better your dream of gold than death. Not far as the charts read from the Cape of Good Hope. I saw by chance into Ahab's soul. As the wind drove the ship, so was he driven by a storm within. I had roused myself from the night watch and made my way topside in the starry silence. Then from the captain's cabin I heard this telltale wakeful pacing. I placed my ear to the weather planking, and with my ears I saw into Ahab's soul. I, they think me mad. They know me not. But whom does he speak to? I am not mad. I am madness itself. Madness maddened. The men, I must set them afire too. And yet to set other stuff afire, the match itself must be destroyed. Well, so be it. I have willed to find the whale, and what I have willed I shall do. I shall not swerve. The path to my fixed purpose is laid with iron rails, whereon my soul is grooved to run, Fidella. Fidella? What word is that? Madman, madman, I think I foresee his fate. I... But must we help him to it? Is that our duty? Mine is to obey him. And to hate him, but with a touch of pity, sirs. Still, there's hope. What makes you say that, schoolmaster? My geography. The monster has the whole round, watery world to hide in. He's no goldfish in a tiny globe. They have will sail all of that world for his purpose, you young fool. Well, then there's still one who can wedge aside his purpose. Huh? You, I suppose? No, sir. God... Shake away! Tumble out! Hey, All hands hey, up hey, Spring to it! Spring! Hey, Our hey, ears hey, to the quarter deck! Hey, nice, they go, they go! Quick, quick! Jump, ye pagans! Jump with your irons on deck, ye pagan devils! Attend now, braves, gather ye round! Advance, ye pagans! Come to me! Your lances, cross them before me! Well done. Let me grasp the axes where they meet. Steady now. So. Ahab held the irons in his own iron grip and sent a baleful glance around us, meeting every eye. But I caught a look in Queequeg's eye, yes, and Dagoo's too, and Tashtigo's. A look of wonder, much like fear. Swear ye men that man the death for whale boats bow. Death to Moby Dick. God hunt us all. If we do not hunt Moby Dick to his death. Quick, quick. Mm. What happened there? When he grasped the lances crossed in front of him. I mean, what what was it I saw in your eyes? Quick, quick, not know. Was it fear? I thought you feared of no man. They have maybe not man. Quick, quick, what happened? Not know how, but... But Queequeg hand feel like, like fire run down spear from Ahab hand to Queequeg. Fire? Not hot like fire, like touch strange snake fish. Get pain like small lightning. Electricity. Run up 
Queequeg Queg arms sting hard. Ah, you are afraid. Maybe so. Good Hope, we sighted Spout, we gave chase, struck hard and straight, and brought back to the Pequod the giant carcasses, stripped them of ton upon ton of blubber and meat, filled the tripods and kegged the oil, and fed the screaming gulls that came from nowhere, leaving behind the torn carcasses in our wake like floating islands, besieged by ravening sharks. But never a trace caught we of Moby Dick. Sunrise to sunset, we kept watch for whale. Two hours on, two off, perched a hundred feet above the rolling deck. My companion, the hot sun, and the lonely albatross at the head of the tallest mast. My orders? Keep a weather eye open and sing out every time. I had room for no companion. My perch was two thin parallel sticks no thicker than my hand up in the cross trees. No comfortable crow's nest basket for the Pequod. Place only for searching the circling sea and thinking. On into the Indian Ocean and beyond, with no glimpse of that unmistakable white geyser of the sperm whale, much less the milky hump of Moby Dick. On and on, crossing and recrossing the equator's line. Uh, I wager he heads for Japan to catch the migration along the line. What, what's the line? There's an invisible river in the sea, a stream the great fish follow north for mating. Will Moby Dick be there, Mr. Starbuck? Uh... Are you praying, man, Mr. Schoolmaster? If need be, I. Then on your knees and entreat he be not with the others. There be only one ocean left for the prophecy to come true. Now we are through the Malay Straits and into the South Pacific, two years from home. And still that one ocean ahead. Mr. Stubbs. Do you think he'll touch the Philippines? Oh, doubt it. But will he give us no chance for the taste of fresh water or fruit? You have the rain, schoolmaster. Perhaps he'll put in a Japan. We could pick up trade goods. There'd be a dollar in it for those of us on short shares. Hold your tongue, lad. But if he continues to pass up whales... Schoolmaster, have you learned nothing in these two years? The Pequod carries two cargoes and only two. Ourselves and vengeance. Eight bells there below... Tumble up and set the watch. Captain, the wind has dropped. Then away both and haul her till we raise one. Fedala. Fedala. We all turned. There in the door of Ahab's cabin stood Fedala. Tall and lean, one long tooth protruding over a thin lip like an ivory fang. His suddenly grinning face, a mystery. His yellow face. And now, we were in truth a world complete unto ourselves. White men, black, brown, red, and yellow men. Man in all the created colors. Man bound together against the beast mightiest of all that lives. And instead of a wind, the sun broke and touched the golden doubloon nailed by the madman to the mast. Gold! Gold! Who or what is this strange newcomer, Fadala? Did Ahab conjure him up? Or has he been a stowaway? And what can you, a poor schoolmaster, for whom one and one make two, what can you make of the mystery of the sudden appearance of the sun? Can you believe Fadala conjured that up too? I'll continue shortly with Act Three. General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. Now we have word about Moby Dick. We, Pequod and crew, are well into the reaches of the Western Pacific. The line, 
where the great whales follow some inborn drive to reproduce their mighty kind. From somewhere, Ahab, or perhaps Fadala, with some ancient spell, raised us a wind. A wind? A storm? Snug below decks, we waited it out. While quick, we combed his razor-sharp harpoon. Why'd you do that, Pagan? Should think it's sharp enough. Quick, I'd smell him, Moby Dick. Find him soon. The dollar, no two. The dollar magic man. Make magic in captain's cabin against whales. I'm bug. We quag no better. You look. See Carpenter there. Aye. What's he working away on there? Coffin. Looks more like a heathen canoe. Coffin shaped canoe. Queequeg tribe. Mr. Starbuck, why do you turn so white, sir? It's the prophecy again, isn't it? Aye. Will you not tell us? If you insist on knowing what you'd better not, there'll be three parts to it. One, the captain will die. Two, he will not perish. Until you see two strange hearses for carrying the dead upon the sea. One fashioned of wood grown in America, one not made by man's hands. And the third, is it the whale? Will he perish at last? No. The third is, after he sees the hearses, Ahab will die of hemp. Ahab will die of the rope. Who made this prophecy? Who spun this wild yarn of hearses and hemp? Yonder he stands watching us with his snake's fang, Fadala. As if the devil knew not when to stop. The storm raged on, driving us ever north and west, closer to the river and the sea that whalers call the line. And in the very heart of the gale, Ahab appeared on deck, set his stump in an auger hole before the mainmast. He stared at the gold doubloon. So you talisman of the beast Still there Every sunrise finds ye where I nailed ye Still aglow amidst the rusty bolts and spikes Who shall ye be, eh? Who learn ye with his weather eye? How it happened I shall never know but I was aloft, and he, Ahab, on his quarterdeck, every man Jack's eye sweeping the sea when... There she blows! She blows! Where away, Captain? There on the starboard! I and sperm at that by a spout! Look! He breaches, he rises! Tis he, tis he! The gold, I claim the gold! Tis Moby Dick, the white devil at last! All hands on deck! Stand by to lower away! took up his place in the boat wherein I rowed. Queequeg poised by him at the bow, his iron at the ready, its rope coiled in its cask at my feet. Madala in the second boat, with Tashtego and Mr. Starbuck, Degu and Mr. Stubbs in the third. While ahead, the great beast plunged and spouted. Ahab spurred us on. There she blows. Right ahead, boys. Lay back on the oars. Lay back. Pull, my children. Pull, my little ones. Break your backbone. Snap your spines, you dogs. Pull, will you? Can't you pull? Every mother's son of you draw his knife and pull with a blade between his teeth. That's it. That's it. We gain on him. We gain. Quick, quick. Stand to your iron. He goes. He goes. And there goes Brooks down. He goes. Spread yourselves. Give way, all boats. Be on him when he breaches. Oh, we get what's wrong. Down to the deep. But Ahab could wait. Reaching, rising like a snowy mountain from the froth, Moby Dick comes up under Stubbs' boat. Ahab hefts his harpoon and poises to strike. The terrible troops come crashing down on the little boat, and the boiling sea is strewn with shattered wood and drowning, dying men. And the monster dives again and disappears. We sought to fish our shipmates out. But the sharks were quicker than we. And Moby Dick, night hides him. 
And we make our way back to the silent ship. Captain. Aye, Starbuck. Away with that hated whale, sir. Let us go home to wife and children. Home? I know no home but the sea for 40 years. Captain, no mortal man can... I am more a demon than a man. Ah, Starbuck, I see your wife and children in your eyes. Stay on board, mate. Lower not when I do in the morning. Captain, I will not stay aboard. Do not command me to, sir. Ah, Starbuck, what nameless, unearthly thing it is that commands me against all natural longing and loving. What is it, Starbuck, that drives me to kill? What is the beast I seek to kill? Is it in the sea? Or is it in myself? That night, Queequeg pounded his drum without cease. He spoke no word to me. His face a mask, dead as that head he held before my eyes that night so long ago on shore. None of us slept until that crack of dawn. Stand by boats. Starbuck, keep the ship. Stay aboard. There goes Wilkes. Lower away. Again, Ahab leads the way. Closer we come until I can see the vast wrinkles of the cruel head and the shattered pole of yesterday's lance sticking like a toothpick in the mighty hump. The steam of his spout rises like a geyser, falls like mist, and now his whole marble body rises from the water in a high arc. Strike, quick, quick, strike before he sounds. Strike with me together. The harpoon, fly, take hold, and Moby Dick plunges on. Sail on the whale, there, to the earth. Him crushed his boat, too. Give chase. Sail on the whale. Aye, he rests for a rush. Reach your last to the sun, Moby Dick. Thy hour is at hand. This iron is meant for thee. Captain, he turns. He comes upon us. Then we shall take him head and head. Down, we quick. Down, all of ye. He's mine. Turning and splashing in furious speed, Moby Dick rushes among us with open jaws and lashing tail. Iron start at him. Blind tangle. Red blood streaming down a snowy hump pitches the sea froth. And again, the monster rises beneath our boat. Again, shipmates struggle, sink, and drown. Only Ahab shell of a boat is left unstruck. All are gone. Tashkigo, Fadala, Dagu. We alone remain. But now he turns. And what I behold that day, upon that next instant, my eyes shall never forget awake or asleep. Beast! I am the faith, Lieutenant. I act under orders. Captain, he comes on! He comes on! I am forever Ahab, ordained to kill ye a billion years before this ocean rolls. Ah, ye come at me again, eh? Only to spout your last. Steer for the open shore. Stand by to sway me up, Ishmael. Now brace me, schoolmaster. Brace me well. Forehead to forehead, I meet ye, Moby Dick. The prophecy! The prophecy! My eyes behold it. Lashed to Moby's back, a thing in harpoon ropes, bound to his back like a toy, half torn by sharks, pinioned to the vast bull rushing down on us like some white stone wall. The corpse of Fadala, born on the water as in a living white hearse. I, Fadala, I see ye. This is the hearse he prophesied, not made by hand. And this, this iron, thou monster, is made for thee. Quick, quick, strike. A hit. See, he turns his flank. After him, after him. Seek me, will ye, sea devil? Captain, is it not too late, sir? Turn back. But it is too late. The whale has turned. We are all but choked in the midst of his bloody spout. But he passes us, drives on as if by some mighty engine, rushing toward my ship. Row, man, row. Will ye not save my ship? So, the prophecy again. The hearse upon the sea. The second hearse of oak and wood grown in America. Oh, my ship, my ship. And all my shipmates aboard. Oh, Lord. 
Where is our ship, the stubborn, sturdy Pequot of Nantucket? Flinders upon the boiling sea, here and there a head of flailing arm. And Moby Dick. There, he breaches it. He, he holds. What evil does he turn over in his heart? He comes. He comes on again. Must he perish without me, my ship? Very well, so last I grapple with ye, ye all destroying whales. From hell's heart, I stab at ye. For hate's sake, I spit my last iron. I am tied to thee in life and in death. Thou damned and evil thing. Thus I give up the spear. in a trance as it flies. The line runs out. The iron strikes. But the great sea still roars on. And on. And now, as Ahab stoops to clear the line at my very feet, he bleeds. See him bleed. Captain, the rope! Oh! Flying turn catches him around the neck. And in an instant, Ahab is shot out of the boat. Down, down he is hauled by the whale to the eternal bottom of the churning sea. And the last of the prophecy is fulfilled. Ahab died. Of the hemp the rope, he died. And not of the great white way. One last blow of those terrible flukes. And my boat, too, is gone. Nothing remains. And I alone remain to tell the tale. Buoyed up until a ship did find me. By a coffin of wood shaped in the form of a savage's canoe. And the great shroud of the sea rolls on as it shall forever. The domain of the greatest creature on earth. majesty of a great beast seemed as if it would never fade. But today, men fight to save the mighty monarchs of the deep. His numbers dwindle. Captain Ahab is sailed off into legend. But in story, the Pequod lives forever. I'll be back shortly. adapted from Herman Melville's great novel happened only in the writer's imagination and came to life in yours. But the fate of the whale is real. Today, we're not sure the mighty creature will even survive. His numbers are down to one-fifth of what they were. Perhaps to your children, they will exist only in imagination. We hope and pray that that never happens. Our cast included Howard De Silva, Mason Adams, Court Benson, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tom Bosley inviting you to return to the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater for another exciting tale you can hear through the magic of radio. The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater is recommended by NEA, the National Education Association.